I'm Mel and welcome to our channel. Today I'm going to go over how I made these window covers and also our fan covers. Some of the things we like about these magnetic window covers is that they are able to match our decor, fully customizable to any size window. They're magnetic and also they create a great insulation and are able to reflect the sun from getting into your van. So we're going to jump right in on how I made these. The items that you are going to need is Reflectix. You can buy a roll of this at Home Depot, Lowe's, different home hardware stores. Some ribbon edging, this one we bought at Walmart some magnets for the edges, and then also a material of your choice. The fabric I'm using is actually like a burlap, and it's a somewhat thicker one. And that's one of the things you wanna make sure you do when you're picking out your fabric is you want it to be a little bit on the thicker side, um, just for stability, even though it still bends. In our last van, we had a Pro Master where we made some window covers for those as well. We actually used some window curtains from Walmart. They're called Eclipse. And then the exact specific brand is called Samara. It's a nice blackout thick material and they're very easy to wash off. We decided to go with this material because it was actually already in this van when we bought it. It had a few materials in here, but we really like it because it matches with our decor here. The first thing I did to make these fan covers was I took the plastic edging from the Max Air fan that it came with. I took that and I put it right onto the roll of Reflectix, the stuff here. I then traced around the edge of the fan cover and that's how I got my size that I need. I did this twice since we're doing it for two fan covers. After that I cut it out and then I used that new piece as a template for my fabric. I then used just a permanent marker and traced around the edges of the Reflectix right onto my fabric. When you are tracing make sure that you trace on the back side not the front side because you don't want any of the markers showing in case you don't cut it completely correctly. So that's just a little tip there is to make sure you trace it on the back side. Once you have both pieces traced, you'll go ahead and use scissors to cut those out. After you've done that, you'll want to go ahead and take the fabric pieces and the Reflectix, put them on top of each other and make sure that they are cut to the correct size, that they match on all four sides. What you want to do next is to start pinning. It doesn't really matter where you start for this part, but what you want to do, for example here, is while you're pinning, you'll want to make sure you smooth out the fabric like this. That way, because sometimes as you're pinning, you'll, it pulls a little bit. So you want to just keep smoothing out the fabric and make sure it reaches to both edges of the Reflectix. Once you're done pinning, what we're going to do is take it to the sewing machine. So if you don't have a sewing machine, see if friends or family have them. I know there are sometimes local places that'll rent them out. I've even heard of libraries that do that. Thankfully, I was at my parents' house to be able to do this project. And since my mom got a new sewing machine compared to what I last used there, she was able to set that up for me and get it all done properly. Thanks, Mom. Once she had that all set up, I was able to get right to work. Put the Reflectix up when I got started sewing. I don't exactly have a particular reason on why I did that, I just felt it was easier that way. I got started in the middle, and the reason being is because it's a lot easier to start and stop in a straight line versus the edges. When you get started on the side here, you'll want to go forward about an inch, and then you'll go backward to strengthen the seam. So for this step, it doesn't matter how straight your line is, but you do wanna make sure you're as close to the edge as you can be because we will be putting ribbon over the edging, but we wanna make sure that we can still cover up that line of thread. Sometimes you wanna keep a watch on that. Sometimes even with the pins, the fabric can slide away from the Reflectix. So that's a very important then to make sure that your thread is going through both materials. 
We want to do a quick look over on the edges to make sure both pieces are completely sewn together on all sides. If you did miss a spot, which I did here and there, you'll just go ahead and re-sew over that spot. Again, it will all be underneath the ribbon edging so it doesn't matter too much what it looks like. After you've sewn together the reflectix and the fabric, what you'll want to do is look around and if some of the excess fabric is hanging off the edge, make sure to trim that down a little bit because when you go to do the ribbon edging, it will cause some issues. So we want to make sure that the reflectix and fabric are matched along all sides. For these covers, we're making them magnetic. We have used Velcro in the past where we sewed it right along the ribbon edging and then we put the sticky to the window, but what happened was that the sun melted the stickiness on the back side of the Velcro. So this time we are using magnets to help hold them up against the plastic fan cover. These are heavy duty magnets and they are not super cheap. They're about a dollar per magnet. The ribbon I use for these window covers is the same one as I used in our previous fan. The minimum you're gonna wanna get is two and a fourth because you need room to go around the edges of the fabric, the reflectix, and then also for these ones, the magnet. It is a big cost difference though when you use magnets compared to the Velcro, but I think it's worth it just because of that loss of stickiness that happened to us in our last van. The other type of magnets I got were these strong slender magnets. We gotta be careful though because even though their strength is strong, the magnet itself is very thin and can break. I bought these ones because they come with sticky pieces to be able to attach to the plastic between the ceiling and the fan. What I ended up doing was putting two magnets on one side and then two magnets on the other side. Um, that's just a budget thing. I would say at least do two on each side at the minimum because you'll want enough to hold this fan cover up to there. So after I got the long slender magnets onto the plastic, I put the smaller magnets on top of them and then marked on the reflectix part of where they will go. The easiest way for accuracy I found was to get a clamp to hold the cover in place when making the magnet placements. Another tip is I used some masking tape to mark the fan cover and also the plastic edging for the fan so I knew which direction which piece went. The most challenging part of the whole thing of making these is pinning this edging. Next part that's the hardest is this corner. So what we're gonna do is use this handy dandy tool. That I'm not really even sure what it's called, but I mark one inch, mark one inch on the tool and then I measure the edge for my ribbon. I then place a pin there. I go down a little bit further and use that tool again and then I will put a pin there. I keep using this tool to measure so that has accuracy for the front. the back of the ribbon is not straight that's okay because this is the part you're not really gonna see it's either facing upwards towards the fan or facing outwards towards the window so when you're inside your van or RV or whatever it is you have you won't really see this part so it doesn't matter exactly how that looks what you want to make sure is that your front looks nice and clean so when I'm measuring I kept doing it from the front and making sure it was tight on the back
Once I've pinned my side, I just lay my ribbon across the edge, which you can see here, and then I will pin the other side. Once I have both sides pinned, I'll go back to the middle. So the middle is actually gonna be the hardest, and the best you can do is fold it over and try to make it look pretty. I focused on the front again compared to the back. The back here, I have about three different loop overs, and then the front, I just have the one. Once you've been able to pin your entire fan cover or your window covers, what you'll do next is same thing as earlier. We're gonna start sewing in the middle and this time I keep this faced up. That way I can make sure my lines are straight and everything is looking clean. Again, when you're sewing, be sure to flip it underneath to make sure that you're getting the ribbon on both sides in the sew line. So when you're adding the magnets, what you're gonna to wanna to do is sew just a little bit past where you need to put the magnet in. And then you're gonna lift it up and slide your magnet in. These magnets are small enough that I was able to do that. Again, I'll have the link in the description on what size we used. Then continue sewing along. You'll do this for the two of the sides, depending on how many that you decided to do, but for us, we did it on two of the sides. So you'll make sure to put mag two magnets on two of the sides. Make sure they're not the sides touching each other, but on the opposite ends. Once you've sewn all the way around and you make it to the spot where you overlapped your ribbon, you'll wanna also do a line that goes from the inside to the outside, up and down like this here. That is because the magnets can actually slide out. So make sure you sew just a small part here where your ribbon overlapped. So after you've sewn around all four sides, you'll just wanna have a look around and make sure there's no little holes that you missed from trying to sew the ribbon on both sides. I did have to go back in a couple spots and sew those together. So some of the things we like about these window covers and fan covers is they're cheaper than straight out buying them. The other nice thing is you can pick a fabric that matches your decor of your van, your bus, your RV, one of those things. You can make them custom to size to the windows that you've put into your build. So how long did it take me to make all nine covers? Yes, nine of them. So we got two windows in the back, two side windows, two fans, and then I have three up in the cab area. I'm not a professional sewer, but it took me about three days and about five to eight hours each day to get all nine of them completely finished. 
some of the things that I would change on this is the magnets can move in between here. So what I would do is just sew a little line on each side of the magnet to keep it straight. It doesn't matter too much if you're putting like this on a window area where there's lots of space to have the magnet adhere to, but when it comes to the fans, there was only certain spots that we put magnets for it to adhere to. The other thing I would change is in the front windshield area, the front one sags a bit. So something that we're thinking about doing is cutting a slit open to be able to throw in something to reinforce the back of it so it doesn't sag as much because it seems to be letting in a little more sunlight and heat than we would like compared if it was flat up against the window. So as of right now, those are the only two things we would change for the DIY window covers that we have made. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions on how to make your own DIY window covers like the ones I've made and shown you today, just put it in the comments below or contact us. And if you have made ones just like this or you made the ones from our video, please let us know below as well. We'd love to hear from you. Please subscribe to our channel if you'd like to see what else we're working on and where else we might explore.